Hello everybody! This video is the first video in a series of videos I'm going to make about design systems. I'm going to be using a website I'm working on right now because I'm building it for it. I'm going to show how I'm doing this and uh, share all the relevant links in the description. First video is going to be about globals, in particular global colors and global type or typography. This is what we're building uh, in terms of typography. So uh, as we have a smaller screen, the size of the type is smaller. Um, in Figma, if we look at this, we see uh, two variants. One is for touch, the other is for desktop. Touch is the same for mobile and tablet because tablet will, in my case, be just using two columns same like this, so there is no need. There's also one more difference, we're using two different scales uh, for typography perfect for a more contrasting one for desktop, which means bigger difference between sizes, and then major third for touch, because these are smaller screens and I think it's too much to use. Perfect for. Uh, before we start, I'm just going to show a little bit how my setup works. So I'm using the child theme for Generate Press. Oh yes, this is all going to be done within the context of the Generate Press and Generate Blocks theme and plugin uh, or ecosystem. I'm using Generate Press child theme to work. Um, um, so I have a functions. PHP that loads various PHPs, so I have a kind of cleaner thing. This is just while I'm working, it's here, it's going to move to its own file as well. And so basically, mm, mm, what I have here is uh, and, uh, this is just pointing to a file that escapes if someone tries to directly con you know, uh, open the file, this is a security thing. Uh, and I'm setting up uh, a constant so I can more easily create links and, uh, and then uh, I'm just pulling files that I need. We need the enqueue, which is a file in the in folder where enqueue static files like CSS and um, JavaScript. So um, again some security and then I load on the front end the, in particular, we now want to look at this one, so it's a typography style sheet which loads on the front at the end of header, so it's easy to override generate press default parent team default styles. And then I also uh, load the same file within the block editor. So our block editor looks the same as the front, or at least as much as it can be the same. I'm just you know doing it in admin, uh, not in the editor because that to some errors. I don't know. Uh, okay, in the typography file itself, I load local fonts, which are Google fonts in my case, work sense. Uh, to put in uh, in assets fonts directory, and then just load it. Um, and I also have to do it like explicitly like this in the editor styles, you can't just do it on the elements themselves like paragraphs and so on, for some reason I, I realized this works better. So anyways, this makes it look the same in both editors, it makes it load faster and in terms of privacy Google will not track your users unless you want it to, uh, not through fonts anyhow. anyhow. So, uh, how to create local fonts from Google Fonts? There's a tutorial by Generate Press which I'm going to link to, as like together with everything else. Okay, so this is the setup. Um, let's first talk about um, the simpler part, which is global colors. So, if I go to customizer. My setup works so that I have my own colors, right? And have their own names, primary dark, primary light, secondary dark, secondary light, and accent 
pronounce that's it, and I like these names. I know this is normally not called primary, but I like to call it like this because it's everywhere, so it's primary for me. Uh, I'm setting these for body, and then where I need. Not everywhere, like, I don't know, primary, whatever. Um, there's two parts you need to do. One is to reset the names and values uh, of the general press defaults. And then you need to also set those as defaults for this button. Let's go to, for example, um, navigation search, and let's change. For example, let's say, let's, you know, let's say this was a color. You say no, no, I don't. I want the default color for this element. You press default, and it will return to my primary dark. So to achieve this. Um, we have to go here a little bit and we have to look at global styles file also linked on functions php so there's two functions provided by generate press that enable you to do this one will just you know it's a, it's, it's it's defaults for global global colors of generate press which allows you to reset those in terms of what their name is what their slug is and what the value is and you can do this for however many you want. I will link as well to instructions on general press. So this is the first part which enables you to just have those colors called what they are called, what you want them to have, you know, to have their names as you want them, and values. You could have just you could use the names by generate press and just change the values, but that would work. But I just I wanted it to be to have my names. Um, and so so this is going to do that and to handle the default button you have to reset for every element that you can control in the customizer what its value is going to be what its new value is going to be and these names you get from a file on the general press repo which tom kindly linked to for me um where you have all these names so for example navigation search has two values you can control as a section in customizer background color and text color and let me show it first in the customizer so customize uh, colors navigation search so background and text in navigation search is the same as background and text in navigation search as well as navigation search here background and text and so i set it this these to be uh light and dark so dark for text like light, light for background and as a result uh if i start typing it's black and it's on a white background okay yeah so these are uh the colors I will link to these, uh, you know, to this, uh, so you can use it. Okay, this enables us to, you know, use the customizer, but with our own color system. Um, second, after, let's go to typography. If we go to typography, um, we want. Uh, to oh, wait a second, I just need my brain to start working. Uh, okay, so we, we have the types type here. So after we have pulled the typography CSS file, so typography CSS file from Encure, you know, we, 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 we load it in the editor, and this which in turn loads the fonts we can now go to customizer as well and set the font so we choose the font and we choose it for the body and this works on the front end on the back end you need to load this in a css so here Okay, so um, 
nothing else. I will not be using the typography settings here because they are not good enough for fluid typography. So let's see how that works. I'm just going to rename this into final and I'm going to name set this one. First we have to set our static sizes. So I will move and concentrate on the content or on the block con content, right? So I'm going to just uh, hide this so it's easier. Uh, not final, I want this, okay. So these are waiting to be used, but right now wait, let's start with um, a CSS for mobile and tablet. So I will be using REMS as a measurement for everything that has to do with typography and everywhere else where I can in the design. And so I, I switched everything to my um, uh, to rims. I set the root element of the document to be font size 100, which equals to 16 pixels in browsers, right? So we know that our base size of the type is 16 pixels. And from then on, uh, we can use rems confidently. So these are widths of the browser but turn to rem and which makes it work good in uh, retina high resolution uh, uh, same as uh, non high resolution because it's not linked to pixels but it's linked to kind of the, the, this dynamic sizes of typography. So how did they calculate this? Um, so I will just add, you know bring this uh, calculator here and say, um, I kind of forgot, but let's see. So 62 rems is like times 16. So that's, that's the size of the breakpoint in pixels. Uh, that is currently the one that's used by Generate Press. Okay, um, which I think I'm gonna keep. Um, and so that's one. And then, uh, 48, so 48 times 16 is going to be this one, okay, um, and so on. Uh, there's one also the one I'm using for the maximum size of my content, I'm using this, which if I divide by 16, I will get 105, and I will have this somewhere, I think, oh no, I'm not using it because I'm using minimum, okay, okay, so this is how we calculate, and this is how we calculate the width of the browser thing, or the breakpoints, but we also calculate um, the type sizes like this, okay. Uh, this is based on certain type scale, so I, when I designed in Figma, I used typescale tool, which is typescale.com, uh, and I'll link to this as well. And so if I choose for the, for, for the mobile first, the major third, and I use work sans, I'm going to get my scale. Uh, and so this is going to be my body size, which is 16 pixels. It asks you here, what's your base size? And, and then it provides you the pixel value and REM by value. So you don't really have to calculate that much, but sometimes we will need to do that. Okay, so once you have this, you have your scale, you designed with it in your Figma file or however you design, you can apply this to your style sheet. And so I have various sizes. I have a kind of a large H1, uh, and then I have a paragraph, which is same as base size. And then I have like for some kind of leader text to be larger as well as large. And so I just use the calculations, you know, I use the numbers from uh, from uh, you know the scale 
this is for the mobile and then when I do the same for my um, for my desktop I go here and I switch to perfect fourth it's good if you keep or stay with 16 pixels and just do the same if you need more sizes you just press plus and you get a bigger one uh, or plus here and get a smaller one but I, I will never go under 12 uh, pixel size because that's very small okay so once we have that handled now we know our values for desktop it's important to have this here as a graceful degradation method so if there's an old browser which doesn't understand fluid typography it's going to use this value but if it does uh, then it's going to use the flexible type and so that's the one um, in order to proceed you have to understand a little bit how the how the fluid typography work and i'm just going to show it here so we get we call font size um, here and then we call the clan function which has three values value value and value right and let's call it min max optimum which you know means that um, this is going to be the minimum size of your uh, font for this element and it is going to be and this is going to be the maximum so it's never going to be bigger than this and this is a bit more complex one this one is it's optimum so optimum is a bit dif more difficult to understand but let's put this in like the clearest possible or the simplest possible terms let's say 13 pixels is going to be the absolute minimum let's say the 24 pixels is going to be the absolute maximum of course in REM but you know and what goes here well we can you know what we are doing is we're um, changing the size of the font depending on the size of the browser or the width of the browser so what is basically going here is something like uh, let's say zero so zero seventy five per percent of viewport width this is a measurement which if you don't know make says the width of the browser you could put percentage but then this is um, you know a link to the parent element of whatever element not to the browser itself this is linked to the browser itself so this means that it is going to you know have a size relative to the width of the browser uh, just uh, until it reaches either this end or that end then it stops so it will never be too big or too small but you can calculate this a bit smarter and then it's more difficult so instead we are going to use another web app which will help us with this which is a fluid responsive font calculator which does a lot of smart things and you, you don't really need to know all these but for a paragraph we control the font size we want to do it with the clamp because it does different things choose the clamp comments will help us later know what's going on so it explains the code to you and um, and this is it and so we have so it's in the rem somewhere yeah i chose rem right and so it asks you two things for what kind of viewport so from this size in rem as well to that size so I, I think it's only wait a second I need to change something so my sizes are 62 not this so from 
62 RAM with 205. So this is 992, I think, and then this is 1680, uh, which is, you know, how big my space for my um, uh, browser is for the desktop. So within that area, change the font from this size to that size. My static size uh, of the paragraph uh, is a bit. It's a bit bigger than the than the, than the sixteen pixels because I wanted it like this. So let's uh, see how big I've got now. Um, so this is okay. One three three three. So it's one point three 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 times 16 is equal to yeah 21 something right so if we go to the scale again it's this one so this is how big my body text is um, and so this is kind of in between a very small or like in between, sorry, not a very small, but in between that size and that size. So it can be a bit bigger and a bit smaller. And so when I do that, I, I you know, generate my CSS. And then I use that and that. Um, I go after. So this is when the browser understands clamp, it's going to use this and not that. And I also copy this comment because it's useful to me for later. Okay, I can like, if I want it a bit more cleaner, let's see like this. So here, this is the central part, the part that is the optimal size which takes into consideration your viewport width, which 1% of the viewport width minus whatever, blah, blah. And it calculates this within kind of a bit more complex math that gives you the optimum size. And then this is a minimum and that's the maximum. It explains here uh, what, you know, uh, is going on. So it tells you uh, it's going to be 14 point something pixels, the smallest, in a viewport that is um, at least 62 rem, and it's going to become big, as, as big as 18.20 um, until uh, uh, it reaches this size. Okay, so this is, um, you know, and I completely put it in the wrong element so this should have been here not there okay and so now our font is going to be you know changing size and uh, okay so that's how you do it um, and uh, once we did that, uh, I can now, and you go from one to another. So if we go, let's say this is the first one, let's for example say, so for H6 and H5, they use the same size. So let's, you know, go, uh, actually I'm going to do it like this because it's now it's going to be faster. So if I go to... Wait a second. Du, 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 du. Uh, if I go to H four, then you know I can have. Let's just copy it all. I can have it in work like this, right? And so now, you know, we have the static one, 
we have our clamp and you know so I have it. anyways so what I do is if we take a look at P value and the next one in the size the next bigger one the maximum size uh, of the paragraph is a bit smaller than the minimum size from the H4 and so on so that they stretch somehow um, same speed let's say and so as a result you get you retain the the ratio okay so now I'm going to um, delete this file because this is just this um, working file and now if we look at the, the document or the, the style sheet now we have all of these sizes set like this so they have their um, static one and then they have their flexible one which starts smaller goes across this value uh, all the way okay so this one yeah sorry the biggest one stops at this value as much as the smallest one so the small type in my size, size as well in, in my case as well stops at the small small is the same like this but it enlarges but all other ones uh, for example let's look at uh, this one so it starts smaller and grows bigger across this size so that we have this stretching working so now we can go back to this we can resize and we get um, the fluid type working uh, and that's it for today I will link to this these files that you need and see in the next one